So I started back on the tap tomahawk today. All right, thanks. So the last video, this uh, this piece was sticking out way to one side. What I wanted to do is uh, go ahead with the forge, heat this up, and thin this out by hitting this way with my cross peen hammer. That actually brought the metal, shifted the whole metal over, and then I was able to go ahead and draw the rest of this out. A little hole in here, I'm okay with that. I may just put a piece of wood inside there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, what I want to do now is start grinding down, grinding this, getting it uh, roughed out, and then I'll go ahead and I'll heat treat it. So at this point, I had a gap in this area right here. What I wanted to do is try to inlay that with brass. A uh, buddy had asked me to do that to see if I could. He said, I expect your next tomahawk to be inlaid. So I just used a brazing rod, heated that, ga heated that whole gap up in red, and just kind of dabbed that brass in. That should stick around. Now I'm going to try to grind that out and see what we get. So the next step was to heat treat the, the tip of the blade. I see a lot of people will uh, heat the entire knife or tomahawk, just cherry, just, just beat red, and then dip the whole thing in. I really only heated to here. It's tough to, tough to show that on the camera. But I heated this portion. You can see some of the discoloration here. But this whole part was cherry red, you know, hot till a magnet doesn't stick to it, and then dipped in the oil. And the same thing with the spike. I really only heated, you can see the discoloration here only heated back to this point and dipped it in. I don't want the entire thing. I mean, this is made out of a tap. This is some very brittle metal. I should do this to be not just brittle. Now I'm going to try to go ahead and I'm going to draw. A lot of people call that tempering. I call heat treating the process of heating and quenching and then tempering. The tempering, I'll take this up once I clean it off with the wire brush, which I'll show you. I'm going to clean this off until it's back to, to shiny metal. And then I'm going to heat it up to, uh, I don't know, four or 500 degrees, like a straw blue is what they call it, and then I'm going to let it air quench from there. All right, so I shined the metal up, put the uh, sanding disc on it. This way I'll be able to see the color whenever it transitions. Same thing with the back. You can see the back. We're going to go ahead and heat this up, and then I'll uh, show you once the, the color is attained. All right, so this is after what I call heat treating, or drawing out of the steel. Uh, you can see the blue discoloration in there. That means it's got up to the right temperature. A lot of people will throw this, not a lot, some people will throw this in an oven and let it sit for an hour, a couple hours at 400 degrees or something like this. I'm just going to, this will be all right. And then the same thing with the uh, the bird beak on the back. So I'm going to let this air cool. Uh, this is probably when the metal is most dangerous. Most people, if you see red metal, you're going to know it's hot, but when you see something blue like this, you're not going to suspect that it's hot, but this is enough to to give you second uh, third degree burns. So after this I'm going to let it just air cool and then I'm going to start to grind on it. Um, I'm going to have one uh, little pot of water there so every time I grind I want to drop it in because I don't want to lose the temper now that this is done. And then I'll show you the finishing process. So from here the general shape is done. Get out of here. It's done a little bit better. Um, just going to keep grinding. And then at some point, I'm going to start polishing. So again, remember, this is from a, a one-inch tap. So this really isn't any, you know, you see a lot of imperfections. I'll probably leave this groove in here and some of these imperfections. I just prefer to do it that way. And then we'll clean this inlaid up on top, see how well that looks. I may grind some of this out. I haven't decided yet. So for me, each one of these is unique. I start with a basic pattern, basic concept, and then from there, I... Uh, Wherever it takes me is where it ends up. That's pretty much the finished tomahawk. Just more polishing. Got the edge. Pretty much where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hone the rest of it. Not bad. Again, little, uh, little defects. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. So the blade's pretty much complete for the tomahawk head. Next thing I want to do is make a handle. This is a piece of uh, oak that's been drying for about a year or so. I could start it out. See, I, I kind of cheat a little bit. I chuck it in the wood lathe and I turn it on until it's uh, 
about the right shape. And then what I'll do is I'll take a spoke shaver. I'm going to state sail, sharpen the blade up, and I'll draw this until it's the right um, handle for it fit. So on the center of that, I've actually taken a permanent marker and I've drawn a circle. I want to stay on the outside of the red, and then I'll start fitting the handle to that. So what I'll do now that it's chucked into the wood, here's the, the uh, vise. Hard to do that with one hand. I'm basically going to draw this. You can see the little flat spots. I'm going to draw this knife all the way around until I get the outer shape of that. When I'm done, I get it close. What I'll do is I'll soak this in um, linseed oil overnight, about that far. That's going to swell. And I'm going to pond it onto the end of the handle, end of the blade, and then let it sit, and that'll fit pretty tight on there. All right, so now that I have the handle at least started, there's a little gap in there. I'll put a, we'll put a quarter round piece of wood plug in there. Now that I have that, what I'm going to do is start drawing back. I have a direction. So I'm going to start drawing back this way. I'm going to curve that in this way with the um, spoke shaver. So you know you have a good fit whenever you have all those wood shavings. It's kind of a joke, but when this top is done, now what I'm going to do, probably take it down to here. This is maybe a 20 inch handle. I'll take it down to here and it, the, the grip is just way too, way too tight, way too big. So I'm just going to start thinning this section out. I may thin this out a little bit, almost like you see on a hammer. And then down here I want a nice solid grip. That's the shape of it. So from here I'm just going to start sanding hundred grit all the way down and then I'll show you the finished handle. Now that I think about it, this has come off way too easy to be uh, oak. So what I'm going to do is use some black walnut stain. These are from uh, black walnut hulls. This is what's a jar of this goop. You can buy your stain if you want to, if you want to stain it at all. Me, I like to use what the Native Americans would have used, which is just the, the hulls of the black walnut. So a couple coats of black walnut stain. When I'm done, I'll uh, linseed oil the handle. I'll rub the linseed oil in. Maybe even put a coat of wax on it. I do like to leave imperfections in here. Um, you can see that's the center of the piece of wood. I would imagine that's what the Native Americans would have done. They wouldn't have grabbed a piece of wood and run it through a sawmill. They would have used whatever is available. So that's what I try to do to duplicate it. So it's not perfect. I don't want it to be perfect. Um, we'll let this dry. We'll put a couple more coats on it. And then I will show you the finished product. So here's the final tomahawk. Different. I haven't done one like that before. Again, this is a... Uh, one inch tap and got another state sale. So keep that in mind. I mean it's hard steel. We'll chip on the front there. I have to figure out what that's all about. I'm gonna grind that all down. I'll uh, go ahead and use the whetstone, stone that, sharpen it up, and that'll be good as new. Thanks for watching.